Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas FX tutorial for you. This time I'm going to be showing you how to make a hologram completely inside Vegas FX, and it's going to look something like this. If you want to make a hologram look like that, stick around. First thing you're going to want to do is set up your green screen. Make sure it is the biggest green screen you have, and make sure it's smooth and evenly lit. Then you can set up your key light in front of you off camera that's going to separate you, your subject, from the background. Then I like to put a stand in where I'm going to be standing, then adjust my autofocus so I am completely in focus. When recording, you want to make sure you're doing this in the highest frame rate possible, because that's going to provide the least amount of motion blur, which is going to make it much easier for you to key out the background. And once you're satisfied with your recorded footage, let's jump into Vegas FX. So go ahead and drag your green screen footage into your bin, and then drag that onto the timeline. Then find the part you're wanting to turn into the hologram and trim the rest around it, so you just have the part you want. You can easily split by holding Control shift and then pressing the letter D. And now we're going to chroma key out the green. The best way to do this is go over to the effects tab, then go to the search function and type in chroma, and you're going to find chroma key. Drag that onto your video clip and then go to the controls tab and let's start messing with some numbers. If you click, drag and hold a little eyedropper here, you can drag it over to your video and custom select a color from your video clip. You're gonna wanna choose a green really close to your body. You'll see it does a pretty decent job right off the bat, but we're gonna go ahead and fine tune it. Now these settings aren't gonna work exactly for everybody, so I'm not gonna focus too much on the exact numbers I use. I'm gonna be doing a green screen video in the future that'll explain this in a little bit more detail. Once you're done with the key, then we're gonna go ahead and mask. Make sure your video is selected on the timeline, then go ahead and click the square mask button, and then we're going to drag around, but on the inside of our green screen. Now everything but our subject is transparent and removed from the video. So the first effect we're going to be using to make this hologram is the glow effect. So go over to your effects tab and go up to the search function and search for the word glow. We're just going to use the regular glow under lights and flares, so click and drag that onto your video on the timeline, and that'll apply the effect. If you go back over to the controls tab, then go over to your glow effect and drop that tree down, you'll see a bunch of settings you can change. And here's where yours can be a little bit different than mine. But I like my intensity to be at 0.8 to 1, something along those lines. Threshold I like to put in mine anywhere from 25 to 35. And then the radius is basically how much of the spread your glow is going to do. So I like to put it anywhere from 300 to 400. Change your blend mode to add. And if you wanted, you could change that to add first so you can see more differences that intensity, threshold, and radius are going to do. But again, adjust as needed till you're happy with the glow. Go ahead and drop down the advanced tree, and then check the box that says use A and B colors. This is going to allow you to select custom colors for the glow to have instead of it using the colors on the video or the subject. So for this one, we're going to choose blue. So I'm just going to choose a deep blue for color A. And for color B, I'm going to choose a little bit of a lighter blue. This gives me that kind of Halo Combat Evolved glow. Now again, you can always go back to your intensity and threshold and adjust these numbers as needed. Next, we're going to go ahead and use a displacement. And this is going to give us kind of that staticky, jittery, pixelated look. So go to your effects tab, go up to the search, and search for displacement. And we're going to be using block displacement. So drag that onto your video clip. Go back to the controls tab. For the size option, I'm going to make it one pixel. And for the displacement option, I'm going to start it at five pixels. But then we're going to go above and beyond and animate it. So go under your timeline, drop down all these trees till you get to effects, then go to block displacement, and then select displacement. Select a little circle on the left, and that's going to insert a keyframe. Now we're going to do a big animation for the entrance of your hologram. So navigate forward into the timeline where you want your hologram to be seen. Hold Alt and press T to add another keyframe. Go back to your very first keyframe and change your displacement to something like a thousand pixels. And that means your holograph is going to start off extremely pixelated and then form into the hologram itself. So let's add another little effect and go forward in time. We're going to hold Alt and press T to do a new keyframe with five pixels of displacement. And then we're going to go forward about 10 frames and we're going to change the displacement to about 30 pixels. Then go forward again 10 frames and bring it back down to five. This is going to give it the illusion that we have a poor connection. It's just going to spike to bad quality, then go back to decent quality. Now to give a nice rounded animation, if you select all your keyframes, right click and do temporal interpolation, then go down to manual bezier. This is going to give your keyframes a real smooth transition. So select these three keyframes, hold control C to copy, and then go ahead and paste them all throughout your video. Next, let's go ahead and add some scan lines, kind of like an old TV. So go to your effects tab, go up to the search and search for the word scan. Then you're going to see scan lines effect. 
drag and drop that onto your video. Click the controls tab and let's find our effect. Then we're going to mess with frequency. And this basically controls how thick and thin your lines are. I like to put mine at about 400. Next, you can adjust the sharpness to however you want. The more you drag it to the right, the brighter it's going to be and the finer the lines are going to be. So I'm going to put mine at about 1.5. Now shift basically means how much your lines are going to move on your screen. That goes all the way from negative one to one. So we're going to go ahead and animate this so they're moving all throughout the video. So go back down to your timeline, drop down the trees till you get to your scan line effect. Make sure your timeline's at the beginning of your video, find shift, and we're going to select a little circle beside it to enter the keyframe. And then move your timeline about one second in the future. You don't have to be too accurate. And then adjust your shift to one. Then move your timeline about one more second in the future. Then put your scan lines back to negative one. Then we're just going to copy and paste this till it's doing that throughout 100% of our video. Again, you can select them all, right click on them, choose temporal interpolation, and choose manual bezier to give them all that smooth transition. Next, this one's optional, but if you think your hologram's too dull, we can add some brightness to it. So in the effects tab, search for brightness and contrast, drag that onto your video clip, go over to your controls tab, and adjust the brightness to what you see fit. I'm going to increase my brightness to 40, and I'm going to increase my contrast to 90. This is really going to bleach out this entire look to make it look a little bit more like a standard hologram. The next thing we're going to do is adjust the opacity of the hologram, because we want to kind of make this look like it's losing a little bit of power and dimming down every once in a while, kind of like we did with the pixelation. So go down to your timeline, collapse everything until you see transform, Drop down transform, you'll see opacity, and then go ahead and change this to 80. Anything above 80 means it's going to be less see-through, and we all know that real holograms are see-through. So because we made that intro animation where we're coming up from a million pixels into one hologram, we're going to start the opacity at zero, and then once our pixels are formed into our hologram, we're going to make sure our opacity is at 80. So insert a keyframe once your pixels are fully formed, drag the timeline back to the beginning, hold alt and press T to insert another keyframe, and drag your opacity to zero. So now we got a zero to 80 increase of opacity, and then it kind of fades in real nicely. So very similar to our block displacement, what we're gonna do is go forward in time, insert a keyframe, move forward 10 frames into the timeline, drop your opacity to 40, and then move forward 10 more frames into the timeline, put your opacity back to 80. This is gonna give it that power loss flicker look. Right click all your keyframes if you want, change them to manual bezier, then select just the last three, copy them, and paste them where you want the power to be dimming throughout your video. Once you've done all these steps, your video should look something similar to this. And if you're happy with your result, then let's go ahead and export it. If you go up to view and choose export, you get taken to the export menu. I'm going to do an in and out export, which means I'm going to tell it the exact times that I want it to export out of my video. So for in, I'm going to put zero seconds. And for the out, I'm going to put 15 seconds. Then select export and select in out. This drops it down to your queue. And now we're going to choose the way we want to export it. The way I like to export anything with a transparent background is through an image sequence. This provides the lowest file size and it's fully compatible with Vegas. So you can right click under user preferences and create a new one, but I'm going to show you an existing one I have right here. I named it SYF Lower Thirds because this is the preset I use when I make my lower third animations. For the format, I like to keep it PNG. For the prefix, you can put that whatever you want. I just kept mine at image. I kept everything else the same except for channels. If you select that drop down, you're going to see RGB and RGBA. Make sure you select RGBA because that means it's going to add the alpha channel, which is the removable transparent background. If you don't select that one, your video is going to have a completely black background that is not removable. For the compression, I like to put mine at about 15% because you're not going to notice any quality loss and it's going to keep the file sizes low. Once you're done with that, hit OK. Then go to your queue, choose the preset, and select your new preset that you made. Once you're done, select the output link and that's going to open up your explorer. Right click in any location you want and do new folder. And let's call this hologram sequence. Double click so you're inside of that folder and then click select folder. So now your image sequence will be put inside that folder. Hit start exporting at the bottom and wait for it to finish. If you open up hologram sequence once it's done, you'll see all your pictures in there. It made a PNG picture for every single frame, so if you shot at 60 frames per second, you got 60 pictures per however many seconds your clip is. So now let's go into Vegas and I'll show you how to import this image sequence. Go up to File, and then go down to Import, and then choose Media. Navigate to your hologram sequence folder, select the very first picture, and then make sure you check the box that says Open Sequence. Then hit Open. Name it whatever you want, I'm going to call this Hologram. Make sure alpha channel is selected as straight unmatted, and then hit OK. And this will bring your image sequence in as a one solid video file with a transparent background. 
You can confirm this by dragging and dropping any kind of media, another video of sorts, underneath your hologram. And your hologram's background will be gone. And now you got a hologram of yourself that you can play around with. And that's it, you just created a hologram inside Vegas Effects. It's a pretty easy tutorial, and again, all the stuff I just showed you was all baseline stuff. It wasn't set in stone, you can customize the frequency, the colors, you know, anything you want like that on your own, no problem. But that is gonna wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, be sure to shoot a like down over there, and maybe even subscribe if you want it too. I have a bunch of other Vegas effects and Vegas Pro tutorials back on my channel, Scrapyard Films. So thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I also want to thank all of my scrappers, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Walter Heenan.